perichondritis. This part of the ear is called as pinna. If you take a cross section of the pinna, it will look like this. The center light yellow color is a cartilage. The cartilage has got covering on both sides. This is called as a perichondrium. When there is infection of this perichondrium, it is called as perichondritis. So there is infection of the pinna as well as the, the external ear canal also because this is one single unit. Now what are the causes of perichondritis? The most common causes is trauma which can be mechanical like, uh, like accident or assault or sports injury or so or thermal, chemical or it can be unclean surgeries etc. Or it can be a spread of infection of the surrounding part into the pinna resulting in perichondritis. And the commonest organism which, which is involved in perichondritis in 60 to 70 percentage it is pseudomonas. The, now let us come to the presentation. If the patient presents early to us, they will complain of swelling of the ear followed by and they say there is painful and it's a painful condition and, and they say wherever, it, whenever, wherever you touch in the pinna, it's painful. When they present in the late stage, there will be pus discharge from the pinna. On examination, again let us divide into two stages, early stage and late stage. So on examination, during the early stage, the ear pinna will be swollen up, it will be red and it will be tender to touch. But in the late stage, it will be the skin will be thickened and you can see pus coming out. So this is the early stage and this is the late stage. Now coming to the investigation. So when you find pus discharge, we have to take a pus swab and send it for culture sensitivity so that we can know which back, uh, bacteria is involved and which specific um, antibiotic can be given against it. We need to do a few blood tests like total count and differential count along with uh, C-reactive protein and if the patient is diabetic we need to work upon that so that the blood sugar is well under control. The last being the renal function test. So we have to see the serum creatinine also. Why? Because the antibiotic which is given in this condition can be nephrotoxic. It can, in, it can affect the function of the kidney. So we need to know the renal status before starting the treatment. If suppose the patient is already has got renal function is not proper, the antibiotic dosage need to be altered. So the renal checking the renal function is also must. Coming to the treatment. So the, if the patient presents in the early stage oral antibiotic along with local antibiotic cream or ointment and a painkiller will do the job. But in case they are present late to us, we need to admit, admit them and start on IV antibiotics. Likewise, these patients, they need everyday cleaning of the ear also. We have to keep it clean. Suppose pus is getting accumulated inside, we need to do incision drainage and remove the pus. What happens in a late stage or in those cases which, which is bacterial resistance and, prop, and they don't seek proper treatment, the infection from the covering of the cartilage, which is perichondrium, it spreads inside the cartilage also, involving the cartilage. In that case, the treatment involves removal of the cartilage. So the removal of the cartilage is called as contractomy. If only a partial or a part of cartilage is involved, we need to remove only partially, so it's partial contractomy. If the complete cartilage is involved, then we have to remove the complete part of complete contractomy. So, if, we, if the patient happens to neglect the condition, what will happen? What is the complication? So complication is, there will be deformity of the ear. So, this condition is called as cauliflower ear. Coming to the take home message. Take home message is, whenever there is otitis externa, that is any pus discharge coming from the ear, please seek medical treatment early because this can secondly involve the pinna also. The second one is, in case there is a history of trauma and there is blood collection in the pinna, there will be bacterial in invasion of the hematoma and there can be pus collection there resulting in perichondritis. So treat the auricular hematoma immediately. The third point is, in case of trauma again, if there is a lacerated wound in the pinna, that needs to be washed clear, clean. The fourth being, usually 
ear piercing is done in the lobule. In case it is done higher up, which is usually called as the second channel, we have to avoid the cartilage. Sometimes some of the patients, when the cartilage is involved, it can result in perichondritis. And the last, in case of burns, you have to seek early treatment so that it doesn't proceed to perichondritis. So this is in short about perichondritis. Thank you so much.